this is my 2018 gear review talk chat thing. This is my board. I'm riding a 2017 Descendant 148 because I'm a scrawny bugger. I'm six foot tall. I weigh 62 kilos, which is roughly, I think, 175 pounds. I got grab grabs on there. Um, I got to ride this board once last season when I started to get back into snowboarding. And it's camber. It's got really true twin. It's got pure pop from Burton. It's got the channels. Um, an extruded base. I just really liked the graphic before I threw stickers on it. And it's very hard to find a board under 150 for a smaller bloke like me. Um, it's starting to soften up. It's quite quite a, I wouldn't say jib stick, but definitely flexible enough to, to to butter around but still holds enough stiffness to, to hold it hold a carve really nicely and I got the crab grab mega claws in that cool tie-dye on there like that and if I stand it up against me it's up to my chin almost but yeah and the, the flex on it is Quite nice, I haven't broken it in yet. But yeah, this is gonna be my 2018 season shtick. And um, yeah. I'm riding 32 lashed Chris Bradshaw boots. I got these at the end of last year. Some local snowboard shop Snowbiz had a sale on. They had a pair in my size. I was riding 32 JP Walker lights. I just wanted something with a better liner and a bit stiffer. I've worn them twice to a indoor fake slope here and they're starting to break in. They're not super soft, but they're soft enough that if I'm on the park, they're, they're good for park. Um, they're pretty much a really great all round boot. Um, so yeah, that's my 2018 boot. Um, this season I'm riding Fix Bindings, I believe they're Chris Bradshaw's company, or well, he's involved, he's got a pro model with these guys. Um, I got these as a present from my girlfriend earlier this month, um, we were on the Rhythm Snow Shop website and I saw them and fell in love with them. What? So far what I like about these rhythm bindings is their adjustability doodad. Um, you just sort of, it's a bit like the new Burton one, the Union one, Union's been running the same sort of thing. Just yeah, like that, pops out, you can slide it up and down to adjust your high back lean and just snaps shut. And what else I really like about these bindings is the adjustability on the toe and ankle strap. Um, this is very similar to something that another company, Switchback, have done, where you can just slides in on one side, buckles down, and you get your regular ratchet on the other. The only downfall I've found is the ankle strap isn't adjustable back and forth, up like up into the back of the binding through here, but this here is all toolless so to adjust your high back you can just spin it around a little bit <clears throat> um sorry toe strap on here and you, know, you can have it done up and that can come off and you can adjust your your binding as you go so that was kind of a big thing i liked about these and the graphic I love skulls and red and black, as you can probably tell, very tattoo-like almost. But yeah, that's my 2018 bindings. Got my helmet, my goggles, lenses and my 
goggle case here. I'm running Dragon D1 goggles. They currently have my high line, like sunny lens in them. Cool blue. They're really amber, I want to say, on the inside. If you can see, very amber. Just a black on black, all around cool goggle. I got them on sale for like 90 bucks Australian at Crew Brothers. Um, this is the lens they came with. It's just a basic black, grey, all-purpose lens. I just keep it because, well, you never know. Um, I also got a yellow, ambery, low-light lens for those cloudy, snowy days, which I didn't have last season, if you check out my vlog. When me and Bazza went down to Threadbow, I was running that black lens and it was... It was a little hard to see, so I made the decision to get a low light lens as well, which is always a good idea. Keep it in your goggle stash, which would my goggle stash. I've got, for some reason, I've got my board lock in there. I've got my little baggy, my dragon goggles actually come in, which is, always keep these. Um, clean your lenses, which is really good. But I've got the Dekeen goggle stash in there, cool camo, because I love camo. Uh, it's all felt lines. It's got a little breather bit at the back, which is sweet. Um, another cool thing about the Dekeen goggle stash is I've got two spare lenses, so it's got dividers here for your goggles when you put your goggles in. Um, you can tuck your goggles in to the back main compartment like this. And then you can, you've got two divided separate felt lined dividers. So you can stash a couple pair of lenses in there with them and they're not going to be scratching up your main lens or the extra lenses. If I can get the bugger in there. Um, so yeah, it's, it was really convenient. Um, definitely 30 bucks well spent in my opinion. I think that's what I paid for it. Just living in Queensland, I travel through airports a ton to get to the snow here in Australia and stuff so you don't want your expensive gear getting bung, banged up and stuff and this just fits in my board bag next to my helmet and stuff like that so it's really convenient um, I also got my helmet here I've got an Anon I have no idea what Anon helmet it is it's black uh, I took the earmuff parts off. It's a little yellow highlight there. It's got a yellow strap. I have a big melon. The old noggin's quite large, so it can be very difficult for a big-headed fella like me to get a helmet that fits over a beanie for those cold days and over my hood on those really cold days during winter. So I was really happy that Anon did a helmet that was big enough to fit over, I think, over like a 62 centimeter head, which is massive. Um, and I can rock a beanie underneath this helmet and still fits quite comfortably. So that was sweet. Yeah. And it's also got a cool, if you're an over the, over the helmet goggle strap kind of, kind of person, it's got a nice little elastic doodad that holds your goggle strap down if you rock your goggle. So this is the bag I've got for this season. Probably going to be the bag I have for the next probably five seasons. Um, it's a Dekeen Low Roller 157. Cool thing you got boot compartment on the outside, big enough to hold a pair of boots. Um, On the inside, you got enough room, according to Dekine, and from my experience, enough room for two boards and all the rest of your gear. Cool thing about the Dekine bags now is they have this, let me flip it over. This is at the wheelie end, a internal waterproof boot or gear bag. Um, it just clips on with these little doodads down here. So, um, and yeah, it's just like 
So say you got two pairs of boots, or you're repping yours and your partner's gear, or whatever, or you want to your 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 pants and jacket are wet. Uh, you can just chuck it in here, and it's not going to mess up any of your other gear inside your bag. So yeah, and it's got a little bit of rigidity on the back down the bottom near the board, the wheels. I mean, it's got four-wheel drive looking kind of wheels, kind of cool, very rigid. Um, quite stiff at the bottom end of the bag. Um, underneath that little little um, boot case. Gives you an idea of how rigid it truly is. I have no idea why you can do this, but I'm guessing it's there for a reason. You can flip up that little bit there. I thought it was to stash, a little board stash compartment, but it wasn't. But yeah, that's my, my board bag. I have my tuning kit in a cool box. This is the box that my fixed bindings came in. The thing about fixed bindings is they have no regrind plastic in them at all. Um, this is what they use their regrind for. It's a box. This is the box your bindings come in, and it's awesome because you can use it for what I've used it for, your wax kit. So inside my wax kit, I have an old one ball J triangle scraper. I have another scraper in here somewhere. I have a 12 inch beaver wax, wait, wax scraper. That's the main wax scraper I use at home, here in the studio when I do my initial board waxings. I take the little pink one in my board bag with me to this, the mountain. I have a demon wax nylon brush, just to finish off any Kind of you brush your board. I had some beaver all purpose wax, all conditions. Um, wax it smells fresh, it's PFC free with fluorocarbons and stuff. Use it to rub on or with hot wax. Haven't used it yet, haven't got around to waxing my boards for the season yet, so that's still probably a month or two away. But yeah, I use beaver wax. I have a file for tuning my edges when I bother. I'm really lazy when it comes to tuning my boards. But that's for major like cut like detuning my edges and stuff. I have a one ball J board file, like a proper file for your board. You can tune your edges back up after a day or two in the snow when it's or detune them. It has two different angles. It has a 90 and an 88, depending on what angle your board runs. I know some boards run 90, some boards run 88. Not usable with GNU and LibTech and all that magnet traction. They do do a magnet traction one, which is critical. But that's just your basic wax file. And a beaver wax, because I seem to have a lot of beaver wax gear because my local snowboard shop that I love to shop through Rhythm down in Cooma do beaver wax stuff here in Australia. So I've got a beaver wax torque tool for mounting bindings, unmounting bindings, all that kind of shenanigans. It's a little stash pocket up in the top holds all your little bits that clip in, which is sweet. And it fits in your pocket so you can take it on the mountain with you in case you run like an EST system or your, and your bindings come loose any binding can come loose really I suppose um, so yeah it comes with that that's really convenient just chuck it in your pocket when you're on the mountain or in your backpack what else do I have in this cool little box of things I have some spare screws mounting screw, mounting hardware from my board I have a one ball J ceramic fire. God, I suppose you call it a fire ceramic stone for deburring. After you do a file of your board's edges, they get real little burrs and stuff. This is great for 
So removing those burrs and stuff, I think it cost me about five bucks, ten bucks. That's that's very convenient in my thingy. Here I have my wax iron. I have a demon wax iron I got in from the UK because nowhere else did one, so I've got a little adapter on the end of it here for Australian plugs, which is convenient because I can take it around the world. Like I'm planning on it at the end of the year heading over to Whistler. So if I've been ever in Europe or the UK, I can use it over there as well, and I just buy an adapter. Oh, I wouldn't need to buy an adapter for Europe and UK because I've got that. But I can just buy an adapter for other countries to take it with me. What else do I have in here? I've got those, some old Wumble J maple bacon wax. This stuff smells amazing. It's what's currently on my board from last season. Still smells delicious. Don't eat it. That is a stupid idea. But when you when you use it in your shed or wherever you wax your board, it just smells so amazing. Um, my housemate who's a skier, before we went last year, I was waxing my board with this stuff and he came down and he was like, mmm, that smells so nice. So if you're into nice smelling waxes that are good all-purpose waxes, Wumble J do some really cool stuff. Yeah, that's my tuning accessories box. This is my on-mountain videoing gear. I have a $70 action camera from Officeworks because I'm a cheap bastard. Uh, it's waterproof mount, waterproof case. It's connected to a mount that goes onto my helmet currently. I have a Kaiser Bus, which is a cool Australian action camera company tripod. Well, my pod extender arm thingy has this cool little clip that comes with it. Their action cameras have a Wi Fi app, an app for your phone that you can connect up and control your camera from your phone. So it's got a little adapter that goes on the front here that holds your phone. So when you're at full reach, this thing goes up to I think 40 inches, which is ridiculously long. That's almost as tall as me. Um, Oh gosh, that's, that's how long it is. So when you've got it at full pelt, you can control it from down the bottom here. So a nice EVA grip, so it doesn't get super cold because it's made out of aluminum, which is kind of nice. It'll freeze your mitt off if in the snow, and it's got a nice little wrist strap, um, and yeah. That's my on-mountain vlogging gear. Um, so this is my apparel for this season. I've got Burton's mid-weight, lightweight, I'm not quite sure. Dry ride thermals. Got that, that California camo full set. Um, yeah, I... Bought this stuff last year on sale. Found it really comfortable. Moisture wicking, which is something you kind of really want on the mountain. You don't want to be getting a sweat on um, and it not it's sitting underneath the thermal layer. That can be really uncomfortable. I remember that when I was first starting to snowboard 15 years ago. I was buying department store thermals. And at the time, department floor thermals weren't doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, they are kind of now, but I just prefer this type of stuff. It's dry ride. It's Burton's dry ride. I like the print. It's kind of cool. I like camo and stuff. And I was lucky to get the whole set on sale. So, yeah, that's my thermal layer. Uh, so this is my main layer, you'd say. I've got DC, I have no idea what DC pants are, they are, but they're camo, and they look cool, and my DC pants, I've got these on sale too, I'm like the cheapest guy I know, if I spot a sale, I'm all over it, I've got an awesome belt, um, it's called an awesome mutant belt, I hate belts, but I'm so skinny my pants always fall off my bum, um, so it's really hard to find a belt that fits, the awesome mutant belt's like a boot lace crossed with a web belt. 
which is really cool. Holds my pants up when I'm on the snow, which is really nice. Nothing worse than your duds falling off and getting a wet dot. So they're my pants. Um, they're quite comfortable and warm. I have a awesome looking Volcom jacket. Also scored this on sale for like 140 bucks. Um, it's really nice. It does have a like clip style powder apron down the bottom. It doesn't have like some jackets will have inside pockets. It doesn't have any inside pockets. It's a very lightweight kind of jacket. Has a lot of pockets on the front. I think there's four pockets on the front. Like there, 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 and there. And then underneath those two front pockets at the bottom, there are two other pockets. So there's definitely enough storage space. And it just looked really nice um, to me. I like the look of it. That's predominantly why I buy my gear. The way I buy it is the look. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't really care. I wear enough gear. But that's my like main jacket I'll wear throughout the season. Um, and I can throw a sweater on underneath if it's super cold. But dude, I live in Australia. It doesn't get really cold in our winters on the mountain. But yeah, that's my main jacket. This is my accessories and other stuff. So I have my DC mitts oh, I like them because they're cool looking again they've got a little bit of felt there to wipe your schnout like so got an elastic wrist bit super stretchy uh, an elastic wrist guard they're leather palms which is kind of nice so they're not going to tear up as much when you're going for those sweet grabs or Doing Euro carbs, they're going to give you a little bit more protection when doing that kind of stuff. I have to go along with the rest of my Burton thermal layer. I have a mid weight, you could call it mid weight, I'd call it lightweight. They call it mid weight. Um, neck warmer for spring conditions, um, just because you don't want to be rocking something too heavy. And I don't like to during spring, but it's good to keep, in my case, my earlobes warm. Because I've got big dangly earlobes. It keeps my earlobes warm. Uh, I've got my black headwear beanie. It's black. It's a beanie. It goes under my helmet. It's comfortable. Black headwear are a cool Aussie little Aussie company that support into... Loving the local snow scene, so I've got a black headwear hood, beanie I mean, I have a 32 hood, this thing is super thick and fleecy, this is what I rep in those winter days where it's super cold and probably dumping on me, um, just wear it under my helmet, comes up over my nose. So it keeps everything nice and warm and insulated. I think it's made of wool or fleece, I don't know. It's got an adjuster, so you can tighten that son of a gun up. But, bam! And loosen it. It's pretty cool. Got that on sale for like 20 bucks recently. That was my latest edition. Now I have my, another piece from Black Headwear. I've got their Smoke Darts Break Hearts Limited Edition. Thing they did last year, hood. Uh, I DWR'd this so it's water repellent. Um, this is my hoodie I wear during spring park days um, when it's just too warm to wear your jacket but it's just cold enough to need a hoodie. Uh, so I throw this thing on on spring park days. I even wear this around Brisbane and wherever I go just because it's so comfortable cool thing about it is it's got a little kangaroo pouch on here that has a zipper on both sides so like if you throw some stuff in there and you've forgotten about it you can zip it up on your park run or your, your on the chairlift or wherever you are it's not going to fall out of your pouch which is really convenient and it's got a cool little ciggy 
smoke there on the on the wrist. And it, again, it's an Aussie company. Um, you've got to support your local companies and stuff because they will support you in the long run, keeping your industry alive here in Australia. So yeah, that's that's my 2018 gear. Thanks for checking out my video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you disliked it, I'm gonna cry. No, I'm not really. If you like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button. If not, that's your fault. Go somewhere else. Piss off. Peace. See you later.